kind of chilly. It's like the dead of winter, man. I know there's other people. I'm looking around real hard because I know there's other people that are showing up and I don't want to get too deep into things before uh, everybody gets here. How many of you were here for prayer? Good. Let me hear something. <laughs> Thank you, Father God, for your mighty signs and wonders. Thank you for your miracles. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is your holy name, Lord. Blessed is your holy name, Lord. Blessed is your name, Lord Jesus. The Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we give thanks unto you. We give thanks unto you, Lord Jesus. We give thanks unto you. Thing and on ling jing lamong a ling lamong list. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We worship you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, almighty God. Name Rusatan. And there's none like you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for your mighty workings. Thank you for your wonderful grace. Thank you for your so great a salvation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Blessed assurance that you give. Thank you, mighty God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful works. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for all that you have provided for us in this wonderful grace that you've given. Blessed is your holy name, Lord. Lord, we praise you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for those things that you placed in your church. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that you sent to be our leader, our master, our teacher. Thank you, living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and the discerning of spirits. We thank you for the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, and the gift of faith. We thank you, Lord, for prophecy, for tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Lord, we thank you that you placed in your church first apostles, secondarily prophets, and then teachers. After that, working of miracles, gifts of healing, and then helps and governments, and then after that, diversities of tongues. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God, for this wonderful works, the wonderful works that are taking place in the midst of your church. We thank you, Lord. Uh, 
that you and those, O Lord, that have been brought unto you, your children, are for both signs and wonders. Lord, that the nations might be saved, that the nations might be made disciples unto you, that all men might see this amazing grace. <laughs> oh, Lord, we thank you for the yoke-breaking anointing of the Word and of the Spirit. Thank you for the yoke-breaking anointing of the Holy Ghost and power. Thank you, Father, that we learn how to do everything that we do by you and through you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I turned on? Over here? Do you want me to? Okay. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, listen, we, we welcome all of you. We're so blessed that you're here. This is our first night for the School of the Spirit. And uh, the School of the Spirit is simply the fact that you and I have been invited in by the living God to be come and, to come and be taught by him. And um, in John chapter 14, verse 26, the Lord Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. I'm going to send you the parakalitos, which is a very difficult Greek word to translate. And some translate it comforter, some because of, of various different reasons. Some people translate it helper. Uh, some can even translate it uh, to some degree uh, mentor. Um, but Perikletos, Jesus said, I'm going to send you another one just like me. And so Perikletos is most perfectly defined as another one just like Jesus. So if you want to know who the Holy Ghost is, he's like Jesus. So as Jesus was the disciples, the Holy Ghost is to us. And so we want you to know who he is. We want, you know, we, we don't want the Holy Spirit to be a stranger. We don't want him to be, you know, some kind of, a, of an expression, some kind of a Pentecostal expression or expression based upon a single gift. He's a person. And um, you want to step into his school because he's the one who's come to lead us and guide us. And the fact of it is, Paul put it down like this. He says, many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So be sure of this. If you're not led by the Spirit, then you're not a son of God. So you want to learn how to be led by the Spirit. You want to learn how to come into a school, be taught of God. Isn't that wonderful to be taught of God? We live in a new covenant time where the, where the living God's come to be our teacher, our mentor, our guide. We don't have to be concerned about a lie. Because he's come to lead us and guide us into all truth. And we know that there is, it's not subjective. It's very objective because the Holy Spirit's singular purpose is to reveal Jesus. Huh? Religion doesn't make Jesus the centerpiece. Okay? Well, we, but the Holy Spirit does make Jesus the centerpiece. The Word of God makes Jesus Christ the centerpiece. He's all that we will ever need. He's the supplier of all that we have need of. He's the one who's done everything for us and the one who's going to do everything for us. He's the one who began this work and he's the one who finished it. There's one thing I am certain of, that he who began a good work in you and me shall also finish it by Christ Jesus. Amen. And so, you know, this, this is the realm of reality. Here's what we want to do in this class. We want to teach you, number one, we want to teach you how to talk to the Lord Jesus and immediately feel his manifest presence. There are many people who pray, quote, unquote, they talk to the Lord Jesus, they talk to the Lord, Father. Uh, they, have, they don't feel his manifest presence. It's just speaking into the air. In fact, I, I've witnessed many people, as they pray, it's less of value and less qualified a communication than what if they were speaking to another human being. And so we don't want that to be that way anymore. We want you to discover that God is living, that he's very present, that he's here right now. He's far more than religion. Religion is an activity by which people try to approach and interact with God but have no ability to do so. However, a relationship brings to us a manifestation of the Spirit. And we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7 that the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given to every person. So no one is excluded here tonight. And people are, struggle with this. They struggle with, well, well, you know, and, and of course, you know, Paul didn't leave us to wonder what was he talking about by the manifestation of the Spirit. What, well, what could that be? Because he goes in. To the revelatory gifts. He goes in right there in, in, from verses 8 through verse, verse 10. 
He tells us exactly what the gifts are. And I'm going to give them to you in a different way than he lists them because I think it's helpful for you to be able to remember. So he gave us divine revelation gifts. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the discerning of spirits. Jesus used the word of wisdom, he used the word of knowledge, and he used the discerning of spirits, and you and I are supposed to follow him, and we're supposed to do what he did if we are his disciples. And so we need to learn how to do these things. Huh? <clears throat> and he gave us divine power gifts. The working of miracles, the gifts of healing, and the gift of faith. And then he gave us divine speaking gifts, divine utterance gifts, which is prophecy, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. Now, let me tell you this to start with. My dear friends, listen to me. No gifts of the Spirit work outside of the realm of faith. And I've never seen faith ever work outside of risk. You're going to have to take a risk. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, and they never saw Jesus walking on the water in the middle of the storm. And they didn't even know anybody could walk on the water as far as they were concerned. Such a thing couldn't be of a human origin. So they said it's a phantom. It's a spirit. Literally, they were referring to when they used the Greek word there, it would refer, it'd be something that would be used only in, in, in relationship to saying that there is an evil spirit. There is a spook, a Casper, the ghost, okay? And... You know, oh my goodness gracious, can you imagine? They're already fearing for their life. It's a threatening night. It's a stormy night. There's no stars out. There's no moon out because it's a stormy night on the, on the Sea of Galilee. And if you've ever been out on the water at night in a storm, you can't see a hand in front of your face. Huh? And here comes this bright, shining light walking on the water. And so Peter says, if it be you. Huh? She said, fear not, it's I. <laughs> he said, if it's you, bid me come at your word. Just bid me come. Let me hear your word of authority. Tell me to come. Well, <laughs> Peter had to take a risk and throw his leg up over the railing and walk out onto the water. And, and praise God that he did because then we saw that not only would Jesus in his natural body have total authority over all the physical natural realm, but anybody who walked with him would also have the same authority over all the physical and natural realm. Huh? Now, you can believe that or you cannot believe that. You can sit in doubt and unbelief. You can say it was for another time, but this Bible tells me, it tells me very clearly that anyone who believes doesn't say 12 apostles, doesn't say 170 others also, doesn't say 120 uh, that were there on the day of Pentecost. It doesn't say a first century church. It says anyone who will believe these works which I do shall you do also and greater works than these. Jesus gave to us that wonderful, glorious outpouring of the Holy Spirit so that we would do those things that only go on in the realms of heaven that will prove to mankind that how much Father loves them, that would be the ability to strip Satan of all of his influence. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name you cast out devils. I believe one of the greatest expressions of miracle power is the ability to cast out devils. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 28, he said, if I work miracles by the Spirit and cast out devils, then the kingdom of God has come to you. I mean, what a great expression. When you look at the summary of Jesus' ministry, you, for example, Mark chapter 1, verse 39, he summates his ministry that he went out through all of Galilee and, uh, and, and, and Judea, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and casting out devils. You'll find over and again that the Lord gave to those who are going to walk in his authority Power against unclean spirits. He tells us that, you know, in the same context of the 70, uh, he tells us we'll tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing should by any means hurt us. Now, come on now. I want you to understand if you're going to move in the, in the wonderful realms of the gifts of the spirit, you are going to have to recognize one thing for certain. 
and that is this. You're going to have to begin to move in faith. You're going to have to say goodbye to fear and step into love. Many times we pray, we lay hands on people and we pray for them. And the first thing, before I start to pray for them, uh, many times, especially in America, you feel the hindrance. I just feel the hindrance. In, a, in foreign countries, there is no hindrance there. We'll be in Jarapura in, uh, in June, July in Indonesia. And the dead will be raised to life again in that place. I mean, all those people are just people coming out of the jungle. And some of them have bones in their nose. I mean, it's just, they're just primitive, you know. They have no problem with the spiritual realm. They know about the spiritual realm. they under the influence of their shaman that runs their village. But when Jesus comes to town and when the power of God shows up, I mean, all of those influences are completely eradicated and the power of God freely flows and nobody has a problem. They're not under the influence of religion. Oh, don't do that. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, that's, you know, some uh, demonic manifestation. Well, my goodness, I've seen people uh, take the gifts of the Spirit and try to say it's a demonic manifestation. Well, if there's a demonic manifestation, please tell me where's the man- manifestation of the Holy Ghost. I'd like to see the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. If the devil's doing so much, where is, that, what, where is what God's doing going on? Are you with me? And I'm telling you, that's a bunch of nonsense. Satan just runs influence. Runs, hind- runs, a, uh, runs a hindrance, tries to run a hindrance and an influence against the things of the Spirit. And you and I are just going to have to buy in on God. Now, you might have bought in on Christian philosophy, and by and large, you won't, you probably wouldn't even imagine how much you are affected by Christian philosophy. And Christian philosophy will keep the flow of the Holy Ghost out of your life. Religion will keep the flow of the Holy Ghost out of your life. Compromise with sin will keep the flow of the Holy Ghost out of your life. You're going to have to just decide on buying in on this whole word. Nothing but the word. The word of God is true. It's right now. It's profitable for my instruction. It's how I'm going to now be able to follow God, walk with God, and do the things that the Lord has purposed for me to do. And I'm going to trust him. I'm, I'm going to know for sure that if I ask him for a piece of bread, he's not going to hand me a stone and say, chew on that. If I ask Ask him for it. And I, if I ask him for a fish, he's not going to give me, you know, a, a, a snake or a scorpion, either one. And say, here, how do you like that for dinner? If I ask him for egg, right? Come on. He's not going to give me some poison. Please. How much do you trust God? How much do you trust God? And if God said you're supposed to have the word of knowledge, you better get with the word of knowledge and quit being afraid. Now, I want you to understand how the school of the spirit was born. And first of all, let's just hearken back to 1 Kings 19 to start off with. And when, you know, Elijah had a bad moment and, you know, and uh, thought his life was over and the Lord come healed him, touched him there at Mount Horeb or what we call Mount Sinai and showed him how that by the still small voice he showed the greatest manifestation of his power. Uh, oh, the presence of the Lord came and the, and the mountain was rent and, and the rocks exploded before the presence of the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And then there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. An earthquake that shook the whole of the earth, as it were. But the Lord was not, not speaking in the earthquake. And then, then there was a fire, a fire that enfolds upon itself, a fire like no other fire. When the fire of God is being manifested, but Father was not speaking in the fire. And then there came the still, small voice. It was a whisper, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a Hebrewism that literally means you're basically going to have to lead, read the lips to be able to understand what's being said. And he showed... Elijah, a whole nother realm. And Elijah then goes and he tells, he says, Elijah, go anoint Hazael, king of Syria. Go anoint, uh, go anoint uh, Yehu, king of Israel. And go anoint Elisha, take your place. And so the first thing he does, he starts away with the most highest priority. He takes care of Elisha first. Amen. Now, Elisha was the grandson of Horai. Horai was one of the 12 spies who went to spy out the land. And his papa blew it. His grandfather blew his opportunity to be live great for God. He came back, said, we can't do it. We're not strong enough. We're not able enough. We don't have enough people. We don't have enough weapons. We don't have enough resources. All we got is God, and they got all this other stuff. Huh? He blew his opportunity, but Elisha's not going to blow it. Elisha's going to fully live for God. He's going to immediately take, and he's going to make a barbecue of that 12th. Uh, he, he plowed with 12 yoke of oxen, and he was plowing with one of them. And Elisha threw the mantle upon him and invited him to come into the school of the Spirit. That's how it happened. We, we, we can understand how, you know, the first person I would say that stepped into the school of the Spirit would have been Joshua. 
because he what happened with him is he saw the glory of the father come upon the tabernacle in the wilderness and he was captivated and the scripture says he did not depart from the door of the tabernacle i mean see that's what happened to me I don't understand all these different expressions of Christianity. When I saw him, I was captivated by his presence. And, his, and so forth. So being captivated by his presence, I didn't have to be convinced to do these gifts of the Spirit. I'm like, I want this. I don't have to deal with doubt and unbelief. It's mine. Because I see all the gifts in Christ Jesus. Somebody said, oh, seek the giver and not the gift. That is, that is absolute nonsense. You can't have the gifts without the giver and when you got the giver you got the gifts it's a package they're not separated from one another that is it's just it's just satan raw constantly running interference telling his nonsense lies trying to neutralize and stop the people of god with his it was it with his threatenings with his intimidation and with his fear well i mean i'm believing god that here in this meeting here on Friday night that people will come in here. They won't come all, you know, trying to be suspicious. Oh, well, we just come in to investigate. We come in, we're going to bring our knife of circumcision and come spy out your liberty that you have in Christ Jesus. <laughs> be cut off by no religious person. Are you with me? <laughs> I'm not interested in that. This is a place for people who are hungry for God, who want to know how to move on with God. <laughs> who want, who are who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness? Who who above everything else they want the kingdom of God in their life. Above everything else, they treasure Jesus and they treasure the Holy Ghost. We have this gift. We have this treasure right now in this earth and vessels, which which Paul referred to as our body, right here, Second Corinthians chapter four. Earth and vessels. We got a treasure. This treasure is the power and the glory and the excellence of God. I am the tabernacle of the Holy Ghost. Of course, he can speak through me. Christ Jesus lives and walks in me. Of course, he's going to do his ministry in my life. And, 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 and what we want to help you to understand is first and foremost, this is a walking in the spirit and getting into the school of spirit is first and foremost about your relationship with Jesus, your personal relationship with Jesus. And then secondly, about your ability, and most importantly, <laughs> about your ability to now go everywhere and preach the gospel. You can't preach the gospel without the Holy Ghost. You cannot. Jesus said so. One of the last things Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 5, he said, John baptized with water, but I'm going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. Uh -huh. That's what he said. He said, you got to go wait. In Luke chapter um, 24, verse 49, 48, 49, you got to go wait in Jerusalem till you receive the promise of the Father. <laughs> he will clothe you with his majesty. He will clothe you with his light. Listen, people, understand this. God has given to us his very life. And people sit around with, with depression and sin and demonic activity going on in their life. They sit around lukewarm. They sit around pale and disinterested and say, this is the life of God. It's a false witness and a false testimony. It has nothing to do with the life of Jesus nor the fruits of the Spirit that Jesus named that Paul named, that Peter named. I'm not having nothing to do with it. I'm staying away with it. I'm going to stand against it. I'm going to stand here in this place upon this mountain of his word and prophesy. And I'm not going to speak according to my own understanding, but I'm going to speak faithfully his word. Here's what he said to do. Forget religion. Forget all the falsehoods. I don't care if it's Hinduism or Buddhism or Mormonism or is Muslim or Islam. Mohammedism is better said. Mohammedism. Or well, whatever is them. <laughs> if it's Christian philosophy, Christianity, it means those who are anointed. Those who are anointed with the anointing of Christ Jesus. That's what Christianity means. Hmm? Somebody said, well, it's to be a follower of Christ. It's to be anointed. Messiah in the Hebrew language means the anointing. To, be, to receive uh, the the the. the this wonderful pouring out and smearing of the thick oil of divine anointing upon you. Hallelujah. And anybody who received that, it received special graces, special divine ability. 
priest receive it, he received a special divine ability to stand before the presence of God and behold the glory of heaven and not pass out. Huh? It's probably part of what Daniel's problem was. Huh? He gave him a visitation from heaven and knocked him slap out, knocked him out. He was as a dead person. You know what I'm saying? And, but, uh, but Aaron, he had a special anointing stand for the presence of God. He could stand in the presence of God, walk around, minister to the Lord. Everybody else slammed. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, a king gets a special anointing. Oh, he goes from a shy guy hiding in the high haystack to a person who's so bold and full of authority, strikes terror in the hearts of those he looks at. Saul, right? That's what happened. And so... You know, when you got the kidneys of somebody take child in hand. See kind of muscle, we love him. Oros to get a son and make a list. La manga le katoya. Mum brifetish. Malinda. Lay hands on, pray over him. Hallelujah. Nang le se kata moratai. Nili masu to receive bakateya. No sotone is say. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everything the Holy Ghost does is divinely orchestrated. It's in order. It's decent and in order. I've never seen the Holy Ghost do anything that was not decent and in order. Huh? Even when on the day of Pentecost, they all began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Now, according to Christian philosophy, that's not decent and in order. But according to the word of God and what the Holy Ghost did, that's decent and in order. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And for us, that's when the mantle was passed. That's when the mantle was thrown upon us. Huh? Elisha was already a covenant child. He belonged to the tribe of Simeon. He was a Simeonite. And he was our covenant child. He was already a part of the graces of the covenant. But when the mantle came, the mantle represents the anointing. It represented that anointing, a special anointing that Elijah received from the Father. He had a special place with God. Early on, he recognized that he would never die, or he would not die at that time, but he would be caught up into heaven. Isn't that pretty radical? In fact, he's the prophet that stood between the chaos of a world that is pressed with, with demonic activity and sin and iniquity to the coming of the reign of Christ Jesus for a thousand years. And that's why he's coming back. He's going to come back. He's one of the two olive branches that stand before the God uh, uh, of heaven right now. And uh, it's beautiful. He's a representative of humanity. Well, he wanted things to get done then and there, and they didn't happen that then and there. So about 2,800 years ago, the Lord just took him up into glory. And he's been standing there before the presence of the Lord, waiting to come back. And just before the Lord Jesus comes, Elijah will come. Before that great and notable day, the prophet Malachi said, I, send you my, I will send you Elijah. Huh? He's going to stand there. He stands there in Revelation chapter 11. And look at him, man. He's doing the same kind of things he did before. Call fire down on people messing with him in a, in a wrong way. Out of his mouth proceeds fire and consumes the enemies of the people of God. Radical prophet, ain't he? He truly is radical prophet. Hallelujah. That's, just, that's kind of people God's got. God's got people. Who, they both. They got faces like lions. You ever seen a nice little kitty cat purr lion? I'm telling you, you never have seen a light, nice little kitty cat purr and lion. I mean, that, that face has got some got a serious look to it. Are you with me? But God's people, have faith, their faces like a bold as lions. They run like the horse. And uh, they're afraid of nothing. Before them is as though a garden of Eden. Behind them is a desolate wilderness. There's a fire that goes before them, the fire of God. It's, a, it's, it's being able to go in to no matter what the situation is and bring in that harvest that the Lord of the harvest is expected of us. Father's going to have a great revival. It, uh, again, he's had them over and over and over again through the generations of men. Every generation. It's been great revivals and multiple revivals. We in the we right now being set up and prepared for another great outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I want you to come into the school of the Spirit so you know what to do. I want you to understand you're going to have to you have to renounce your religion. You have to renounce your Christian philosophy. Get yourself in the Bible. You discover you'll find out that you've not been believing right, huh? I, I tell Mormons, announce the heresy of Joseph Smith and you'll be set free. You're that close. You're, really, you're very, real close to the Bible or to the word of God. You've got King James sitting right beside the book of Mormons. Renounce that heresy and the power of demon spirits that hold you in bondage will be broken off and you'll find the liberty that is in Christ Jesus. I say that to a lot of Christians. They bound up with religion and denominationalism. They bound up with the philosophies of men. They cannot they always resist the Holy Ghost. Huh? Now he's supposed to be your teacher. Okay, you got that? Are you with me? Okay, hello. 
Somebody says he's mad. I'm not mad. This is who I am. <laughs> I have a gifting. My gift. This is my gifting. This is the way in that anointing that I've received. This is the way I communicate. This is the way I speak by the Spirit. I am full of the love of God. I am full of the joy of God. I'm not angry or mad at anyone. I'm filled with peace. I'm filled with long-suffering, gentleness, kindness. I'm filled with goodness and faith and meekness and temperance. These are all a part of that which I receive. His mercy, His graciousness, His long-suffering, full of goodness and truth. That's who He is. I I've received the life of God. Have you received the life of God? It is the life of the Spirit. You can't define the life of God by human existence. The life of God is defined by the revelation of the Word. Who He is, what does He look like? Jesus said, come learn to me, I'm meek and lowly. Take my servitude upon yourself and you shall find rest. Huh? Come over here, learn of me. Hallelujah. And I break off the strongholds of the pride of life. People hate the gifts of the Spirit because the pride of life has a demon claw that reaches all the way down to the very core of their emotions and understanding. Yeah. So I'm just trying to set the, I'm just trying to set the basis here for stepping into the school of the Spirit. When you step into the school of the Spirit, you got to be hungry for a different kind of life. Elijah, Elisha was hungry for a different kind of life. Huh? He didn't have the fullness of the life that, that God had for him and that what he was doing. He was out there. He woke up in that morning, and he said, I could go plow the north field. And he's out there plowing, and he's doing what he does every day during plowing season. He's plowing. And all of a sudden, here comes a prophet, takes the anointing, throws, casts the anointing upon him. It comes, and it rests upon him. He, at that moment in time, is willing to take up a brand new life. You and I were supposed to have done the same thing. That was the contract. That was the deal. We have determined this, that if, it, that if Christ died for all, then all are dead. That we should henceforth no longer live unto ourselves, but to him who died for us and rose again. That's the contract. But yet we're trying to live our own life. The Holy Spirit, the first thing he's going to tell you, you cannot live your own life. Huh? Do you know how bad the church needs to hear this? Everybody's being a condone for living their own life. You cannot live your own life. Everybody who's born of the Spirit, here's what I'm saying. And you know in my heart, in your heart that it's true. And you know you don't want you to live your own life. you just basically been trapped. You've been trapped. You've been frustrated. Huh? But the Lord, listen, the power of the Holy Ghost came upon the church. Jesus poured out a mantle upon the, the church. And when the mantle came, it was the Holy Spirit himself coming. You remember what Jesus said in John chapter 7? This is what he said in John chapter 7, verse 37, 38, 39. And they were all, you know, the Jews were going through the, fest, the, the, the ritual feast of the Feast of Tabernacles, which you can read about in Nehemiah chapter 9. It was the great name, Nehemiah chapter 8. It was a great day of rejoicing celebration. And they're bringing, they drawing water from the pool of Siloam. They coming along, doing the things, crying out, oh, spring up, oh well, you know, the, what, what, what is even to the tradition, even to this day. And uh, with water shall we draw, well, with joy shall we draw water from the well of salvation. The other various different psalms and, and uh, songs of Isaiah. And uh, Jesus cries out, says, is anybody thirsty? Are you really thirsty? You see, there is a deep, there is not a deeper passion that you have. Not a deeper passion. I called up one of my friends, one of my evangelist friends, when I got it, drove up in the parking lot, and when I called him up, he was just taking his first little sip of soup after a 10-day fast. He's taking his first little sip of soup, and he's going, oh, this soup is amazing. And I just started laughing. I said, yeah, that's something that only people who fast know anything about. <laughs> he's like, he's all of a sudden get, going, from, going from being all, you know, weak and lethargic to, you know, a sip of soup will make you you know, to just wake up. And then when you, if you've ever gone fasting of drink, fasting of water. See, Moses fasted food and he fasted food and water for not just 40 days, but for 80. <laughs> wow. Hey, now don't try that. You'd be dead. <laughs> you, had, you had to be led into that by the power of God. You had to learn something more about hearing him better than you do. The first thing the Holy Ghost is going to do is he's going to teach you how not to listen to the voice of Satan. Many people hear the voice of Satan because they live in criticism. They live in suspicion. They live in guile and fault finding. And because they give themselves to that, they're always hearing the voice of the demon spirit that they give access to in their emotions. 
And they, they think that's discernment. They think that's perception. They think that's knowledge. It's not. It's influence of demon spirits. But we're going to help you. That's what this school is about. That's what we're doing here. We're going to help you sort these things out. And it's not going to be subjective. It's not going to be some arbitrary opinion. We're going to show you in the word of God. But nonetheless, back to what I was saying. Jesus said, are you thirsty? Once again, I'm going to just point out, that is the deepest passion to known to men. If you've ever gone without drink, without any water, and you get thirsty, has anybody in here been two-day thirsty? Not a drop of water for two days. Well, the prophet Isaiah said, when you are so thirsty that your tongue is swollen in your mouth, you are so thirsty in a dry and thirsty place where there is no water, then if you cry out to me in that kind of thirst, I'm going to open up heaven for you. Huh? So Jesus is saying, are you thirsty? A lot of people are just like, people think, people think Jesus is saying, hey, would you like to try something new? He ain't saying, hey, would you like to try something new? He ain't saying, hey, anybody like a sample? He's not saying that. He's, not, he, he, he's, he, he's saying anybody thirsty is your passion, is your desperation for a change of life, for a new way of living, for the things which God has whet our appetite for. Are you salt? Are you salty? Do you make, do, do, do you make others so desperate for his presence kind of thing? Because I'm desperate for his presence. And if I get into that too much, you're going to get an expression of how desperate I am for his presence. And that's why I got his presence. I'm not desperate for his presence and don't have no, no I'm not getting any results. I'm desperate for his presence and instantaneously yeah. when I begin to pray, manifest glory that you can feel that results in supernatural outworking of heaven in my life. That's what Father has for every man. Every person. The Holy Spirit's come to make us thirsty. The Holy Spirit's come to make us hungry. Isn't that wonderful? He's come to lead us and draw us and guide us. And when you take a drink, Jesus said, if you're thirsty, here God, by his grace, gives us the power to be thirsty. We can't be thirsty on our own. We can't be nothing on our own. We've been healed in the prison of Satan under the under a mind-binding spirits, the power and the influence of, a, of an evil taskmaster who's done everything he can do to hide us and separate us from the living God. God in his grace causes the light to shine into the darkness and darkness cannot resist it by the Holy Ghost drawing on men. Father, drawing on. See, I am a personalized gift from the Father to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So are you. So are you. You personalized gift. And when you realize it, faith goes through the roof in your life. Faith goes through the roof. Faith that works and operates by relationship love just goes through the roof in your life. When you realize it, when, when you allow God, the Holy Ghost, to, to show you these things and, and teach these things to you, how wonderful, huh? How wonderful it is to have this revelation from heaven. The Lord, he makes us thirsty. And he says, if you drink now, if you drink, out of your belly shall flow rivers of the Holy Ghost, rivers of the expression of the Holy Ghost. That's what scripture says. He goes a bit longer saying it. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given for you. He was not yet glorified. But now being glorified, sin to the right hand of the Father, exalted, he's poured forth that which you both see and hear, Acts 2.33. Eh? I know exactly what he's talking about, don't I? I know exactly what he's talking about. He said, the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost comes, there's going to be inexpressible, inexhaustible, unlimited flow of divine power. Somebody said, just how full, full are you? So full that is gushing out of you like rivers, not a creek, not a stream, not a single river, rippers. Now, first thing you need to do is start saying that about yourself. Say, Lord, I believe what you said in your word. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I mean, I wanted to, and I praise God during the, during the, how that during the uh, 70s and 80s, everybody just went around and started singing, I got a river of life flowing out on me. People don't even believe in Pentecost. Makes a lane to walk in the blind sea. It was a beautiful thing to see that because it was a popular song. But how about living it? Everybody know that song? You know that song? I've got a river of life. That's before your time. I'm going to have to teach you. I'm going to have to resurrect that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Makes a lane to walk in the blind to see. Opens prison doors, sets the captives free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Spring up, O oh well. Huh? Within my soul. Spring up, O oh well. And make them whole. 
Spring up, oh well, you've given to me this life abundantly. So what happened, the first part of the song was excellent doctrine, and the second half of the song really digressed because it went, spring up, oh well, within my soul. Well, they already got a river. Why do you need a well? Are you with me? Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up, oh well, and make me whole. Well, you already whole. Well, what do you mean? What are you saying? What, what, what are we? Are we saved or not saved? Are we whole? Are we, are we, huh? Spring up, oh well, and give to me that life. Abundantly? Wait a minute. You already got the life abundantly. You can't be going praying a doubtful prayer, an unbelieving prayer, a prayer of unbelief, and expect to get some good results out of that. Ha! Hallelujah. And so there's things that have got to be corrected in our spirit, can only be corrected in our spirit by giving attendance unto his word. Uh, I'm going to speak it. I'm going to learn how to speak it just like he spoke it. Huh? And, uh, and that's going to be challenging. That's challenging to you. But in the school of the spirit, what, that's some of the things we want to teach you how to do. So prayer starts at 6 o'clock and goes from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. And my son, Pastor Daniel, is leading prayer. And what we're going to do is we're going to teach you how to pray Scripture. We're going to teach you how to pray Scripture like this. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that I came to you and I drank. And you've given to me this wonderful, glorious gift of salvation. And out of my belly is flowing these rivers of living water. Out of my belly is flowing these inexhaustible expressions of the Holy Ghost that the abundance of your life has been poured into me and is flowing out of me by the Holy Ghost which you've given me. Thank you, Lord, that you've given to me the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and the discerning of spirits. I thank you, O Lord God, that right now in my life is the working of miracles and the gifts of healing and the gift of faith because you are present in my life because you live in me you are in me Christ Jesus you are my confidence of glory pray that kind of prayer father I thank you that you opened up my eyes and gave to me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you so that my eyes and my understanding could be enlightened so I could see what you did when you raised Jesus from the dead and set him at your own right hand the seating greatness of your power that you poured out you with me? That's the way to pray. Pray the scripture. Don't pray our ideas, our concept. God's word is living and it's powerful. Huh? It's spirit and it's life. It's as viable, it's as effective today as it was when he first whispered it. <laughs> Elijah had no idea. Jezebel's threatening him. He thought Jezebel would be wiped out after that great exploit at Carmel. He had no idea that 800 years, a little over 800 years later, the Lord would whisper and the baby would be born in a manger. It would be the savior of the world. If it was up to Elijah, you and I wouldn't be here. He would have ended it back 2,800 years ago. <laughs> Praise God, Elijah wasn't in charge. Amen. Ha! Hallelujah. Praise God that Elijah had to learn. You learn that God does things beyond what the, the great wind that rends the rocks can do. The great earthquakes that shake the earth and the great fire that burns up everything. His word, his word still speaks. His word. Out of my belly proceeds his word. Out of my belly comes forth his word by the spirit of truth. Paul said, if I come speaking in tongues, what should it profit you unless I speak by, by revelation, by knowledge, by prophecy, and by doctrine? Hallelujah. And doctrine wasn't the concept of doctrine to Paul that we have now. Doctrine was that which God, the Holy Ghost, distilled within his spirit concerning who Christ Jesus is in the context of the Scripture. Hallelujah. Huh? That, that, which was in, that which is in the heart of the Father, what he wants you and I to have. Huh? People don't know this. I'm going to say something to you. It's going to freak you out. Can I? Okay? For real. Are you ready? Strap yourself in. And, I, and, and, and I'm going to use an example that's going to be somewhat odd. But there's no other way to express it. How many of you have ever had a loyal, loving dog? Anybody? That dog just want to be with you. That dog won't leave you. That dog waits for you to get up in the morning. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It's just like sitting there shaking. Huh? Anybody? Have, I've had a dog like that. Huh? Anybody else? Papa's that way. Papa's that way. And more. She's that way. People don't know. Satan's hidden it from them. Holy Ghost come here to open your eyes. So you can see how my father loves you. That all of his delights, all of his delights, all of his delights are with the sons of men. 
That's pretty radical stuff, isn't it? That God so loved the world, that Jesus esteemed us better than ourselves, that he laid down his life for us. He, he hugged the cross. He didn't care a heavy load. He hugged the cross in affection all the way to Golgotha to bear my sins with joy. Amazing, eh? Holy Ghost wants to show you that. Religion will hide it from you. Huh? Religion will just keep them nailed to a, you know, a, a, a symbol. He ain't on that symbol. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's poured out the Holy Ghost. Acts 2.33. This is where the school of the Spirit begins, and, and I want you to understand, we, we got to be careful about our response being any less than Elisha's response to Elijah, for greater than Elijah's here. The Holy Ghost has come by you, and he's thrown the mantle on you. And I could back that up even further. I could say Jesus Christ has come to you and he's thrown the mantle of the Holy Ghost on you. He's given to us the most, the most amazing glory which all of the other anointings and all the other manifestations of the presence of God and the power of God was just little tokens of. Little tokens. He's now given to us. He's given to us the spirit without measure. He gave, that's the ministry of the son, that sonship ministry. He gave the spirit without measure unto his son. You talk about, somebody said, are you sure he gave us the spirit without measure? Yeah, he's Holy Ghost and the expression of the Holy Ghost is coming out of us like rivers of living water. It doesn't say it's going to last for an hour and 20 minutes. It's an it's, it's an unlimited life. We say eternal life. It's an unlimited life. It's, it's the life of Jesus. It's the life of the Holy Spirit. It's the life of the Father God. It's an unlimited life. It's an immeasurable, unlimited, everlasting, forevermore life that we've tried to con- encapsulate and, 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 and contain within a, 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 an expression that has been abused and misused to the point that nobody even really gets it anymore. An expression called eternal life. No, it's the life of God. He that hath the Son. He that possesses the Son. There's no way to understand First John 5 to 12 other than that. He who has the Son. I have the Son. I have Jesus in me. That is the faith. And look at the diversions and look at the propaganda and the seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils that want to dilute that and make it something different. God lives in me and walks in me and dwells in me. That's what Paul said. That's the new covenant. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. I'll give you scripture for every single thing I say and more than one. We're not talking about abstract, peripheral, uh, elusive, uh, you know, (laughs) one-up scriptures that you might find in the book of Revelation. You know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? How many of you realize you should have two, three verses of scripture for any point you want to make? And then if it's going to be a cardinal doctrine, it needs to not only have two, three, it should have more than two, three verses of Scripture. It ought to have examples, both in the New Testament and the Old Testament. That's the way we do exegesis. That's the way we go about laying out what are the most apparent truths in the Bible. Well, look at what we do. We say 666. Huh? Well, everybody's 666 and You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows about 666, right? The mark of who? Well, one verse of scripture on that in the Bible. One verse of scripture. God telling us about the Holy Ghost and the power of the Spirit and the signs, wonders, and miracles and these works which we which He did, we're going to do. And tells us about. Paul says, "I went and made known the gospel of Jesus Christ by mighty signs and wonders and by the power of the Holy Ghost." We got on and on and on, and everybody's going, "What?" But they take one up verse of scripture out of context and make some big huge doctrine out of it. It's nonsense. It's total deception. Huh? And nobody knows what 666 is anyways. And don't even worry about it. You won't be around. It's irrelevant to you. What's relevant to you right now is Jesus. Jesus. What's relevant is is Jesus in you. Not just do you believe in Jesus. The devils believe. I want to know is Jesus in you. That's the faith. Have you been born again? Listen, the scripture says that we must be with our heart. We must believe unto righteousness. Now listen, understand this. Take a Jew, a Sadek. An Orthodox Jew. He's a Sadek. You know what a Sadek is? Sadek is a Hebrew way of saying righteous. You cannot tell a Jew, an Orthodox Jew, that he has sin. 
I'm not a sinner. I'm righteous. You cannot convince an Orthodox Jew that he's a sinner, and you can't convince an Orthodox Christian that he's righteous. What's going on around here? What's go- what craziness is going on around here? And that's why John said in 1 John 1 8 and 1 John 1 10, if you say you haven't sinned, you're a liar. But yet Satan twists that and takes the most radical epistle against sin, which has scriptures like 1 John 3, 8. If you sin, you're of the devil. It has 1 John 3, 9. He that, he that, he that, um, if his seed, if your seed, if his seed remains in you, you cannot sin. Whoa. Just take verses 1 John 5, 18. I'm just going to give you some highlights of that epistle because the most radical epistle against sin. We know that everyone who's born of God does not sin. He keeps himself and the wicked one can't touch him. See how messed up things are? We don't have to get ourselves some discernment. We need to get into the school of the Spirit and get some Holy Ghost truth. We need to get into a place where we're led and guided by God, the Holy Ghost, into all truth. Because we live in deceiving times. We live in a realm of seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I promise you, I am here wide open through these meetings. Anybody can come to me and ask me anything, challenge me on any verse of scripture. The one thing you're going to have to be ready for is I'm going I'm I'm to ask you to prove whatever you say in the word of God. And you know what? I had a preacher sitting in my room the other day proving to me how it's okay for him, you know, to drink alcohol with the law so he can reach them. And I laid out for him the scripture and I helped him understand. At the end of the day, he didn't want to listen to anything I had to say. You know what I did? I hugged him. I loved him. I blessed him. I fed him supper. You know, I, I kissed him when he was going out the door. That's where we're going to be. We, we're not people of strife and envious demonic. Huh? We can hope for the, the word of God doesn't belong in an argument. The word of God doesn't belong in the context of strife. If it is, it's not God. The Holy Ghost is demonic. I've got a witness that's demonic. God, the Holy Spirit, never does that stuff. I want to teach you how to come into the school of the Spirit and know who the Holy Ghost is and know what he does so you can say no to demon influences because I'm telling you right now, this world is saturated. The atmosphere of this world is saturated by the powers of darkness. And you and I, we're supposed to have been translated out of that realm into the kingdom of the dear Son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're not supposed to be you're running parallels, parallel universe, if you want to say so, <laughs> if you want to understand it that way. <laughs> There's the kingdom of this world where Satan, the God of this world, the spirit that now works on children in disobedience. And, but you and I have been true delivered out of that. We've been translated over out of that, Colossians 1.13, into the kingdom of the dear son. Amen. And if we'll give all attendance to making our calling and election sure and walk in an observance of those things that the Holy Spirit is doing, then Peter said the Lord would make known to us an entrance abundantly into the everlasting kingdom, dear son. We'd know how to access the everlasting into the realms of the kingdom of God. We'd know how to access that place that you and I right now stand. And we want to teach you. We want to teach you to come in and pray and say, and say it according to the word, not doubt and unbelief. We want to teach you to come in and say, thank you, Lord, that I'm standing right here, Father, in your presence, in the holies of the holies. I've come by the blood of Jesus. Not talking about someday in the future. Today is the day. With our heart, man, with the heart we believe unto righteousness. How about all these people running around saying that we don't, we're all unrighteous. And then, then that is anti-Christ because you are saying, with my heart I believe unto unrighteousness. That is anti-Christ. That is a demonic doctrine. You listen to me now. You, with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. That Paul puts as a cornerstone on the gospel salvation of the Roman road. Romans chapter 10, verse 10 is as absolute precedence for salvation. Amen. Amen. And I got a good, bad, this upbringing. Listen to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Looky here. We, we're going to have to take heed unto the word of God as unto a light shining in a dark place. We're not going to rely on just prophecy. Peter said, listen to me. We were there. We heard the audible voice in the mountain where Jesus was there, transfigured before us. We saw Elijah and Moses. He didn't go into all of this in first, Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1, but I'm going ahead and just add into it because that's what all happened, right? We heard and saw the excellent glory and heard the voice when he said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But you do it well if you, t- but, but we have a more certain word of prophecy that you do well if you take heed unto his light shining in a dark place. We got to whisper. Spoken God breathes word. Hallelujah. It can't pass away till everything's fulfilled. See, Jesus said, My word, my word, Jesus said, My word will not pass away till everything's fulfilled. And I purpose that He fulfilled His word in me. How about you? 
Hallelujah. I've been born of an incorruptible seed by the word of God, and that seed remains in me. Amen. Amen. Huh? How do you distill doctrine? How, what do you believe? Do you believe Christian philosophy? You'll never follow and you'll never go in the gifts of the spirit. You'll never move. It'll be a false spirit. It'll be a lie because in the last days, there will be those false Christs who in by the power of Satan, by the power of demonic influence, will work signs and wonders and draw men after them and will be able to even deceive the very elect if that day weren't shortened. This is true. This is true. There'll be day, those who stand there on that day and say, Lord, Lord, Jesus said in Matthew 7, not everyone says, Lord, Lord. Not everyone says that they know me and love me is right with me. He, they'll say, we did mighty signs and wonders in your name. We cast out devils in your name. We did these miracles in your name. He said, depart from me, you who never quit sinning. Depart from me, you who never quit sinning. I never knew you. I'm not running the risk. That risk I'm not running. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, we're going to be, so over the course of time, I'm going to come to you, and if you come to the meetings, I'm going to lay hands on you, and I'm going to pronounce things. I will pronounce things like God said for us to pronounce, like, like uh, j- j- I'm going to do it just like, just like I saw Peter do it in the Scripture. Receive the Holy Ghost. Now, when you get hit with that, don't go, oh, I'm afraid. Oh, no, it can't, I don't want it to be me, because that's unbelief and doubt. There is no gift of the Spirit. There's no walking with Jesus. There's no walking in the Spirit without faith. If you're going to move in interpretation of tongues, you're going to have to get into a realm called faith. Now, it's not the imaginations of the mind. It's not the hope. Hope so. huh? It's not, oh, man, I'm, gonna, I'm not sure. But I'm going I'm to step out here. No, it's not that at all. Have you ever experienced that moment in time where you're worshiping the Lord and it's like all your problems went away? They just disappeared? And you're just like captivated with them? Huh? You're just like, wow, this is beautiful. Right? The presence of the Lord. That's where the gifts of the Spirit work, right there. That is a transition, hallelujah, that we shouldn't have to be making too much in transition. But many people I've observed in this world, it is a gigantic transition for them. I've almost got to bind all the powers of darkness to get that transition. I mean, you know, I'm saying this a little bit humorous, but the bottom line of it is there's way too much oppression going on and Satan will keep you from prayer and he will keep you from praise. If Satan keep you from prayer and praise, he's going to keep you from the other expressions of the Holy Ghost too. So I want to help you to open up the channel. Are you with me? (laughs) <laughs> Hallelujah. And when I'm saying channel, I'm talking about I'm going to help you. I want to help you yield your heart. Open up. Huh? The emotions and the passions of your life. Emotions and passions. Ooh, man, they're watching me on the web right now. We figured he was had a problem. Well, Jesus said out of your belly. He used a Greek word, kolia. Kolia is a word used in Attic Greek to express passions. Just like heart is used. It's, a, it's like a, it's a, it's a actual physical um, part of our body, but it's used to describe our inner man, our inner being, colia, from which we drive the word intestines or colon. Huh? Is used in added Greek to express the deepest passions and emotions of men. It comes out of it we, we, really far, far deep down inside. Not liver. Okay? Now, there are words in the Hebrew language which are used for liver. And kidneys, he tries our reins of our heart. He tries, huh? Mm, where's your liver? But if it's just, it's deep for inner parts of our being that it's almost inexpressible to describe. It's just so deep within us. It's so vital to our lives and our being. So Jesus said, out, he didn't say, out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. He could have said that, right? Because he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. He knew that one, right? He said, out of your kolia. This is what the Holy Ghost said. He said, really, he said, out of your passions and your emotions. Huh? So we're going to stir up holy passions. Ooh, now, we are pastor. We were doing pretty good till you said that. Well, what is love? Is love not a passion? What is joy? Is joy not a passion? Is that a great emotion? Come on, please. St- please, be delivered from religious... 
Christian philosophy for a minute and consider that love is a wonderful, holy emotion. Amen. <laughs> Praise God for it. Uh, pra Praise God for the holy emotion and passion of joy. Praise God. I love being happy. You know, when you think about the manifestation of the Spirit or the fruits of the Spirit and understand people, you Therefore, then, you shall know them by their fruits. Now, let's talk about the fruits of the Spirit. And let's talk about the fruits of the demon spirits. And let's make sure that nothing in our life is conformed to a demonic realm, but in every way is conformed to God. One of my, one of my dear friends of our family that I grew up calling Uncle Charles, he's one of the great theologians of the modern-day church. Okay, well, not the modern-day church. You know what I mean. He's old now. He barely can get out of his rocking chair because he's like, you know, he's way up in his 80s. But Uncle Charles used to say this. He'd say, wisdom is knowing what God is doing and doing it with him. Are you listening to me? Wisdom is knowing what God is doing and doing it with him. God's word has given us wisdom. We know what God is doing. We know that God the Holy Ghost is doing love. Would you like to have a greater manifestation of the love of God? Then start loving people. It's just that simple. Start hugging them, caring for them. The stuff, what's going to stop that? Demonic impacts of hurt, of rejection, of disappointment, and other things. You get, get delivered of that right now in Jesus' name. Get rid of that. Unforgiveness will block the flow of the Holy Ghost. Unforgiveness will keep you from being able to move forward with God. It will continually fester on the inside of you and, uh, and cause you to hook up with demon spirits and you'll have attitudes upon attitudes. You simply need deliverance. You don't need no healing, inner healing. You need to repent and confess your sins and the power of God will immediately and instantaneously change you. Amen. Amen. How long did it take the Apostle Paul to get saved and delivered from Judaism? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's how quick it happened for him, and I'm going to go with him. Amen. That's how quick Jesus said it would happen for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the living God would come upon us, and we would be born again. Born again. New. New. New spirit. New heart. Everything new. Amen. Amen. If any man be in Christ... He's born again, and a new creation was bring forth. And now, old things are passed away. It's all dead and buried and gone. Behold, everything is new, and all things are of God. When will we believe that? I believe that. I'm going to stand upon this mountain of his word, and I'm going to speak it. Don't care what it costs me. And I pray in Jesus' name you will speak it too, for this is the voice of the Spirit of truth. All the Holy Ghost is doing, all he is doing is speaking the word. He's speaking the word as it is written right here in this Bible. Don't let, you, don't let anybody tell you this isn't the way it was written because it is. It's proof positive. Besides that, even if I didn't know textual criticism, even if I wasn't a scholar in textual criticism, I know from the word of God his eyes watch over his word to perform it. I understand how he's kept it by his own power. Come on, give me a break. Man hasn't the power to overthrow what God has done. Man can't change it even if he tried. It ain't going to work. Huh? Satan can't stop what God has done. Amen? Yeah. Nothing that God has ever done has the enemy been able to annihilate or, or change or alter. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. And he's going to alter or change his word. We're going to stand fast, speak this word. I want to encourage you, dear people, that God has called you. He's ordained us. He chose us. In his grace, he not only made us thirsty and hungry, he, 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 we, didn't, we didn't choose him. Just take a load off. You don't have to struggle no more. He handpicked you. Papa handpicked you and gave you as a gift to Jesus. And Jesus said, Father, keep through thine own name those who you have given unto me that they may be where I am, my man, that they can know you like I know you. And this whole list. Of, I love John chapter 17. Huh? Because John chapter 17 then distills down, as Jesus said in verse 22, John 17 said, Father, the glory you gave to me, I've given unto them so they can be one just like you and I are one, just like you're in me, I'll be in them, that they may be made perfect in one. And he didn't say, oh, Lord, I thank you that you put uh, Mark and Kelly and Kelly and Mark so that they may be perfect in one. Huh? And about Christian unity. Christian unity is defined by our union with the Father and with the Son, and with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I believe this. And because I believe it, because I've been willing to accept what God has said as true, faith has filled my heart. And I can hold forth a good confession of faith and say it just like the Lord said it in His Word and say it's done and call it so and not hope for a day to come for the day has already come 2,000 years ago. Amen. He poured out of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's finished. It's all, the battle is won. The victory has been, has been supplied. Hallelujah. This overcoming, this, this overcoming power, this conquering power that overcomes the world is ours. Faith, Christ in me and you, our confidence of glory. Huh? We want to sit around and debate what the Trinity is. You don't know nothing about the Trinity, so be quiet. <laughs> Only thing you know about the Trinity is this. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Just stay there. Don't try to explain anything more because as soon as you do, you're into Christian philosophy now. You've gone beyond the word. Don't add to it and don't take from it. Just stop right there. Huh? You want to understand more about it? Then understand uh, John 17, 22. Just like the Father is in Jesus, Jesus is in me. Amen. And stop there. Stop there. Don't try to advance it further unless the Word of God advances it further. And then we're going to be right with God. And you'll, and you'll see that our hearts are true with Him and sincere. And we'll discover it with the thirst, with the hunger, in this wonderful supply of grace, God who chose us and ordained us. When people say, can I see your ordination papers? I don't say any, I, or, or, or talk about my ordination. I don't say I was raised up a, among the great men, champions of faith. I don't say my daddy was a preacher, my grandfather, my great-grandfather. My, my, my great, great, great um, ancestors, one of them was the first American martyr, was martyr, hung in Boston House Commons, 1640. I don't say, I don't start talking about uh, that I have a THD. You don't talk about all the relationships and the company of great men that I stand in. I say, turn to John chapter 15, open up verse 16. He chose me and he's ordained me. That's my ordination. Hallelujah. That's your ordination. He's ordained me. Hallelujah. 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 That's why they hung my, my, my great, 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 great aunt in the Boston House of Commons. Says she's a witch because she's a daughter of step on de Piquita and shook a little bit because she was a Quaker in a Holy Ghost revival and laid hands on the sick children and prayed for them. Huh? Huh? And nothing changed around here. I'm glad. I, I'm going to say this. Okay, I'm going to off a little bit some, but I'm glad, you know, there's a separation between church and state because they'd come hang me too. Huh? Back then there wasn't, and that's why they hungered. Huh? Taxes were collected by people paying tithe in the Boston House of Commons. Go read your history. Huh? I don't need nobody telling me my history. It's part of my, my, who we are. It's, <laughs> that's our history. That's our family. Are you with me? Come on now, listen to me. Okay? So I know I, it's like he has to push every button in a single meeting. <laughs> cool, can't you just leave some of the buttons for later? No, I just, this is the way the Lord made me. He just wanted me to get after the program and just start pulling down. You know, the Lord raises up people to pull down. He does. And I hope that you're not too sad about that. He raises up people to pull down. And he raised, and, 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 and also to, once the things are pulled down and plucked up, then we build. Amen. And before you can build, many times you've got to pull it down first. You've got to stop this stuff. I mean, I'm up against religion. And that's why, that's why I brought up that point. I'm up against religion. You up against religion. It's still very apparent. It's still very alive. And it still would kill you and me. And still tries to kill us with words. Well, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe what men say? Or are you going to believe what God says? Well, listen, Satan is still doing the same thing. And he, he spoke it through the Pharisees and the, and, the, and, the, and the leaders of the day of Peter in Acts chapter 4. And, 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 and they threatened them and said, speak no more in this name. Don't do any more miracles in his name. Huh? And the same thing's going on in the demonic world today. And what we do is we, we, we learn how to pray. Oh, Father, behold their threatenings. Grant unto us boldness by stretching, by stretching forth your arm. Amen. And grant that there should be signs and wonders by your holy child, Jesus. Isn't that beautiful? We're, we're, we're going to bring Jesus, the King of heaven, the eternal God who was manifested in the flesh, right down into baby mangerhood. Your holy child, Jesus. Huh? I love it. We're going to bring them right down into flesh even to this day. Amen. Amen. And then, you know, but I love it. John, Acts 3, 16. And, and they said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 
beautiful. They didn't say in the name of Jesus Christ, the King of heaven, which is absolutely true. But they brought him all the way down into flesh and blood for you and me. He became everything that we are, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He became everything that we are, that we might be made one with him. And that is an unspeakable gift. You must accept it with total abandonment. Now, this is the first meeting. I'm just saying, the mantle's been thrown over on you. The mantle's been thrown over on you. Like Elijah threw it over on Elisha. The mantle's been thrown over on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, now, what are you going to do? Continue to plow? Because you got some. Here, look, I'm right in the big middle of this. Let me get finished with this because I'm, you know, I'm expecting a big increase this year. And then we're going to be set. And when we set, then we can go. Huh? You're going to start making excuses? Or you want de- are you desperate for a change of life? I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, I've got a far better life than the one that you've been living. It is the very life of God. Hallelujah. Would you like the very life of God? Not a religion, but a relationship. Not an ideology, but a oneness where he dwells in us and walks in us. Sees through our eyes. Speaks through our lips. Touches through our hands. Walks around with our feet. Can you believe that? If you will, if you'll begin to accept and believe what God has said. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up among you as a tender plant out of a dry ground. And we're talking about Jesus, the report of Jesus. You believe, I'm telling you right now, the arm of the Lord will be revealed. Look at what Jesus did for you and me. That's what the Holy Spirit has come to show us. And once you know it, people will be more passionate than the Mormons. The Mormons are very convincing going to house to house because they truly believe what? They believe, they know, they feel the value of it. It's their whole identity and purpose. The Jehovah's Witness are very convincing because they, they bought in lock, stock, and barrel to that lie, and they really believe it, and so they're passionate, and so therefore they're so convincing. And that's without the anointing. That's without the spirit of the Lord. That's what a demon spirit, huh? That's what a demon spirit can do. What happens when you and I become convinced of these things and it becomes our whole life and our whole identity? And with total abandonment, we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. My, 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 my. You're going to see see a national revival that will begin right here in this county with 3.2 million people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me when I was in Tokyo a month ago. And I just, just was so overwhelmed by a free society being so unreached, such a small percentage. I mean, I've been into places where you'll get thrown into prison for preaching the gospel, and there's more Christians than there are in Japan. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. The Lord came to me early in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, and spoke to me and said, all power is given in me, all authority is given in me in heaven and earth. I'm looking for someone to agree with me. He said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore. Huh? He put the go, therefore, to me personally. I'm looking for someone to agree with me. Dear people, this is what the school of the Spirit's all about. We want to be taught by the Holy Ghost like Elisha was taught by Elijah. But it can't be half measures. It can't be half measures because you're going to get half results. Really, you're not really going to get the results. Huh? I, can, I want to help you to immediately to be able to step in to recognizing the voice of the Holy Ghost and, does, and, and recognizing also, in contrast, the voice of, the, of demon spirits and no longer being impacted or affected by the voice of demon spirits. I want to help you how, understand how easy it is to immediately start interpreting tongues. I want to help you understand how easy that is. I want to help you to understand how easy, how simple it is in this flow and operation in God as we obey Him and go everywhere preaching His gospel, how easy the word of knowledge comes. The word of knowledge doesn't come for you and I to sit around and give words of knowledge to each other. The word of knowledge is so that we may convince the unbeliever and God is in our, and they'll see that God is in our midst. Somebody said, we don't need to do that. We, I believe just fine without there being any proof. Well, the Lord has purposed in His great love, which is far greater than yours, obviously, that He's willing to prove to people even though He's done all He's done up to this point, He's still willing to prove it. Amen. He's still willing to provide proof. And that's really what it means to be a witness, to be a proof provider. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we've received a mantle from on high. 
He's poured out the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Is something that you want going on in your life? Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Satan hates it. And so he tries to, I heard this person, I heard these people, they did this YouTube, they tried to make that, they tried, they spun it, those liars, and they tried to make it expressions in Hinduism. Listen, I have been used by God in a mighty way to shake a Hindu nation and to influence Hindu nations. It is a totally different thing. It is a demonic babbling, babbling that has with it a demonic feel. And then they want to say that that's the Holy Ghost. I say they blaspheme and against the Holy Ghost. And I say there's no repentance for them in this life nor in the life to come. And don't listen to them. Don't you mess with the Holy Ghost. You don't know what you're talking about. Taking Hinduism and trying to make it equivalent to that beautiful heavenly expression and language that was poured out on the day of Pentecost, which is the tongues of fire and expression of God's own speech. It is what we call, it is the declaration that Jesus ascended up on high. It is the ascension gift. Jesus said so in John chapter 7 and verse 38 and 39. He said, the Holy Ghost was not yet given for he was not yet glorified. When he was glorified, he poured out a gift and an expression that did not exist anywhere else. I'm going to tell you right now, I have not known anyone operating in the gifts of the Spirit today that are genuine, valid gifts of the Spirit who've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Somebody said to me, well, they did that in the Old Covenant. They did miracles without tongues in the Old Covenant. Well, uh, just, just to inform you, we're not in the Old Covenant anymore. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we now in the New Covenant, and it has a different plan. So don't bring up that issue of trying to make the point with me because that just is invalid. Hallelujah. A new covenant's come, and it was initiated by the Holy Spirit. Well, it's true. The blood of Jesus Christ paid the way for the Holy Spirit to be able to change our hearts. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, yes, it was initiated by the, the Lord Jesus Christ, but it was made effective and manifested by the Holy Spirit. Just like, we know, just like in, the, in, the, in Genesis chapter 1, and the earth was formless and, and it became formless and became without without any kind of shape it became empty and desolate it became empty and desolate and what happened and the spirit of the lord huh hovered over the face of the deep huh huh and what happened god spoke the word spoke what the word spoke said let there be and the holy ghost was there to bring a make, make a manifest bring the thing into, into reality. That's what happened to you and I. The, the word of God came and he spoke and he gave his life at Calvary's cross so that you and I could be born of the spirit who brought forth this new creation. Amen? Amen. Did, is that what the scripture says? The scripture says to be born of Jesus? Huh? You should be born of Jesus. It says we'll be born of the spirit. Amen. I'm going to go with the word of God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now I'm just going to say it that way. The Holy Ghost came and did that. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is here right now. I want you to understand, if you're going to come into the school of the Spirit, you're going to have to recognize, I'm closing right now. I've gone a little bit longer than I wanted to. We just had a lot of introductory things to say here. But the Holy Ghost, understand this, is our master. He's our master. Parakalitos means master. As much as Christ Jesus is our master, the Holy Ghost is just like Jesus. He's our master. In fact, they inseparable. In fact, they've won. <laughs> Amen? They are. Praise God. And if he's going to be your master, then you're going to have to decide you're going to be a slave. Now, if you want to dilute that a little bit and say servant, fine, just as long as you are a slave, <laughs> being a servant, and that you do what your master says. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Romans chapter 6, 22, Romans chapter 6 needs to be read by everybody. Romans chapter 6, 22 says we have our fruits unto righteousness. We, we, we have our, our lives unto righteousness, our fruits unto holiness, and the end thereof, the everlasting life. Unlimited life. Huh? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. That's, we, we, that's who we are. We yield, ourselves to, we yield ourselves to righteousness, bringing forth fruits and the holiness. And what's the result of that? Life of God. The life of Jesus Christ. The life of the Spirit. Somebody said, well, how much of this is positional? None of it. It's an experience. Well, how can, how can it be how can 
Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, be an experience. We're seated together. So the scripture says we're seated together with them in, in a heavenly in heavenly realm. We're in a heavenly realm. <laughs> it's an experience. I'm in a heavenly realm. I'm living and walking in the Holy Ghost. I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. That's heaven. Wherever the Holy Ghost is, that's heaven. Wherever Jesus is, that's heaven. Somebody said, well, how can you be in heaven? Jesus is here. A.B. Simpson, he is a great Presbyterian theologian. He started the, the Christian Missionary Alliance Church. He wrote a song. He said, Jesus is heaven. She says, heaven is Jesus and Jesus is mine. So I'm living in heaven today. Amen. Amen. He wrote, a, 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 if, you, if you've never, if you don't know anything about it, he wrote uh, a daily devotional called Days of Heaven Upon the Earth. It's about walking in the Spirit. He wants you to become students of the Spirit. That's what this is about. I'm going to teach you about the Holy Ghost. I'm going to bring you into the school of the Spirit. I'm going to teach you to know, know the difference between love and hate. I'm going to teach you to know the difference between intercession and accusation. Huh? I, I, I'm going to teach you to know the difference between being a peacemaker and being a person given to strife. Huh? Being a blesser versus being a curser. And if, you can, if you'll begin to let these things be adjusted in your life and you will not give any place to the enemy to work the 17 works of the flesh, Somebody said, oh, we got to sin more or less than every day. I said, we do. I said, well, let's just go through the let's go through 17 works of flesh now. Okay, you ready? Ready? Okay, so you just got to go commit adultery right now. Right now, to like pull it on you? Well, of course not. And well, then, okay, well, let's just go ahead and move on from adultery. So fornication just can't cease from it every day, huh? And the preacher said, well, well no. I said, now, now let's go on into lasciviousness. Lasciviousness is a stronghold in your life, isn't it? And you just got to always just be lusting and everything walks by. He goes, no. I said, well, we're getting somewhere here, man. I'm feeling good about this conversation. Now, let's talk about uncleanness, which really is associated with homosexuality or bestiality, other kinds, being effeminate or being under, you know, other kinds of, of things that, that like that, you know, that everybody says it's genetic. Yeah, it's genetic, all right. Your father, the devil, to put it on you. <laughs> But the good news is we can cast that thing out of you and you can be born of the Spirit and your Father in Heaven will uh, Father in Heaven become your Father. So, but that, that's another story. I want to get off into that. And now, now witchcraft. Witchcraft is just, you just got to get into a seance, don't you? Well, no. Well, then come on. Let's talk. Let's be reasonable here. I want you to taste of Heaven and find out the fellowship with God is so wonderful that in His presence is fullness of joy. And that is right hand is pleasure forevermore. And the whole reason you have enough problems is because you don't know how to live in this glory. And we want to help you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for blessing these people here. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every foul spirit, every lying spirit, everything that would hinder prayer and praise and the flow and the operation of this wonderful gift of God that was given to every person in this place. I bind it now. I render it powerless. I destroy your work, Satan, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the revelation of your love and your grace so that every person here can get comfortable with you and know that you chose them, how you ordained them, that they should bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of relationship, that whatever they ask you, you will do it. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that a great change takes place in your people, a great transition within the framework of their thinking and the framework of how they move and believe you so that now, God, you can begin to do things through them. They walk in this place. I'm telling you, listen to me. You come stay with me in here, and you will wake up discovering. You just go home and discover. I, I, get, I don't know where I got this, but I got the gift of knowledge. Or the word of knowledge. You just be walking down the street and all of a sudden you'll hear the voice of the Lord say, her name is Sally and she was just talking to me this morning wanting someone to come to her and comfort her. You go, hey Sally, you were just talking to Jesus this morning and you told him you wanted somebody to come speak comfortable words to you. Well, you know, that's the end of the story right there. And in that, you don't have to talk anymore. She's busted down. She's crying. She's crying out to God. I'm changed. Where do you go to church? Amen. <laughs> So that's how Jesus used the word knowledge. 
Nathaniel said, can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? Yes, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But Philip was wise, said, come and see. Hmm? Jesus said, there he is, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. How do you know me? I saw you underneath the tree. My Lord, Master, Rabbi, my God. Jesus said, nothing, that ain't nothing. From here on, on out, Bartholomew, you're going to see heaven ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God, we love you. We'll be here every other Friday doing the School of the Spirit because at, right now I'm going to do every other Friday, I'm going to do Order in the House, very important subject, where, where God told me to confront feminism. He told me to confront him, humanism. He told me to run that rebellious thing out of town. And so, I'm, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do order in the house and, you know, it'll be based on the relationship of Christ with his church. And, and that's how husband and wife are going to have a relationship. And then I'm going to run that for a couple, for three months. And then we're going to, and we'll always run School of the Spirit. And then I'm going to start teaching on the book of Revelation. One of my favorite subjects, teach on the book of Revelation. The Lord hasn't released me to teach on it since the early 90s. I think the last time I taught on it was 1992. And so, you know, I've just been released in the spirit to do that. I'm going to do that. And um, everybody come and, and let's just, let's watch what God does. I'm believing. Listen, I believe this. There's nothing, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing magical. You don't have to work it up, nothing. As you sit hearing the word God go forth and you have a hungry and sincere heart, you discover these giftings are in your life. They're just there. Because Jesus is there. Because the Holy Ghost is there. Jesus is here. The Lord Jesus is here. Jesus Christ is here. He's the creator of the heavens. I was just singing this last month in Nepal, watching miracles, signs and wonders take place among thousands of Hindus. He's the creator of the earth. Jesus Christ. Is here, and what I'm saying is, I feel him right now doing what he is, what it is that he does, preparing your heart to receive more because the manifestation of the spirit is given to every person. God, the Holy Spirit, divides individually according to his will. That's verse 11 of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So, I want you to be confident you're walking out of here different than you came. Amen. If you believe in God, if you believe in Christ Jesus. If you believe in the things he said in his word, you're walking out of here different than what you came in. Amen. Amen. So we're done. Find everybody, greet them with a holy hug. We'll advance into the kiss later.